Hello, hello, you guys. Welcome back to Saved Not Soft. What's going on, y'all? Today is such a good day. I just woke up in a good jolly mood. Um, and I'm so excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today. My name's Emmy Moore. If this is your first time here. Welcome. Hello. If you're a returner, welcome back. Um, and this is Saved Not Soft, a podcast where we talk about navigating the Christian lifestyle, what it means to be a Christian, how to face culture, and just what this walk looks like and how to navigate that. And basically, um, God has just placed me in a position to speak to you guys on how we could just walk together as Christians. And I'm so excited for today because I preached this at my church two Sundays ago. I think so. Yeah. Move my mic. About two Sundays ago, I preached this at church and I'm really excited to talk about it because we're going to talk about if Christianity is true and why that is and why Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Just like very fundamental, super simple stuff. And uh, I think we could talk about really fancy topics all day long. Um, But as soon as we miss the principles, the fundamentals, and the foundational stuff, everything else becomes shaky. So uh, I feel like as of recently, I just really want to tap into like very basic practical beliefs that we believe as Christians um, and what the Bible says. So uh, without further ado, if you guys could please bow your heads and pray with me, that'd be absolutely amazing. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you Uh, I thank you for the breath that is in our lungs. I thank you for this day that you have made. I just thank you for always being so, so good. And I pray today as as we go through the Bible and what you say, that we are reassured, that we we feel confident. Um, in your presence, in who you are, that you reveal to us who you are, Father God. I pray that you give me the wisdom to speak, the confidence to speak. You sharpen my tongue. This is your platform, not mine, fully submitted and devoted under you, Father God. Uh, this is not a place for me to exercise my talent. If anything, it's like the basement to build my character. Um, and same to those who are listening. Um, I just pray that we keep humbly listening to you and learning from you and what you have to say and just humble all of us, humble all of our hearts and minds. And I pray that no one comes into this episode with preconceived ideology of who you are. Um, I pray that's just open ears, open hearts, open hands, Father God. And I pray that your children are ready to listen to you and just hear what you have to say and that you just use me, God. And we just see you today. We thank you. We praise you with everything we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So when I preached this message, I preached it to high schoolers and middle schoolers. And as I was thinking of what I wanted to speak on this week, I was like, no, I should really just like reshare my sermon, but kind of maybe go in more depth and like kind of talk about, you know, why. God said what he said. (laughs) Um, Because it's like, if I could talk to middle schoolers and high schoolers about this, I could talk on my podcast about this, you know? And I think it's really fundamental and I think it's really important to understand why we believe what we believe. And I think I see a lot of people who have been Christian their whole lives. And the reason as to why they're Christian was because they just always went to church or their parents were Christian, or their grandma was Christian, or the pastor, or they went to a Christian school, or the pastor just, like, pastored them, you know? And I think a lot of people don't know why they believe. Uh, I remember when I found Jesus for the first time, I would ask other Christians why they believed in God. Like, why is this the answer? And as a new believer, and I would ask other believers a lot of their, like, answers were, like, oh, I've just always gone to church. I was like, no, but, like, why do you believe? And I don't think we know how to answer those very, very simple questions. Why do we believe in Jesus? Why do we have the faith that we have? Is Christianity true? And I want to help navigate that today. Um, I'm going to kind of go a little through my testimony, just like a like a basis of stuff, in case if you guys... Um, our new returning, whatever, um, just so 
all this kind of makes sense. So basically my relationship with Jesus growing up was I knew the name, but I didn't know the person. So I understood that there was a man named Jesus, but I had no absolute comprehension, like real comprehension that the death that he died was so, was so beautiful and freeing. I I didn't understand the depths of what Jesus did on that cross. Um, and that's what I mean by, I know the name, but I didn't know the person. And I grew up, you know, I would go to the church on like Easter and Christmas. My parents wouldn't really make it a big deal though. Um, I would go to summer camp like here and there um, and like winter camp. I really liked winter camp, but I never went for Jesus. Like I just went to go hang out with my friends. I really didn't have that like, mm. I bet there were seeds that were for sure planted though while I went to these camps and stuff. But I was never intentionally going to seek Jesus. I was going to seek like friendships and like, oh my gosh, this boy I like, he going and all this stuff. And um, as you guys know, uh, after I graduated high school, that's when I encountered Jesus. When I left uh, my house, um, I came from a divorced family. Uh, Parents split up when I was in elementary school. That took a lot out on me because basically they separated and the wrath they were trying to take out on one another was then taken out on me. And um, that put me in a really bad mental position because anyone who got divorced parents know like when they split up, like the children are like the middlemen. And um, I felt like I took every hit and jab from both of my parents and how they were feeling Um, And because they couldn't jab one another, I was the one who got hit. So that then turned into um, anxiety, depression, suicidal ideology, and panic attack disorder. And a lot of mental health stuff that was not fun and not okay. Um, And that progressed throughout high school. And then um, when I was 16, I went viral for a little dance video. And I was like, shoo, shoo. That's when the shoot came out. Um, You will not see me do that ever again. And from there on, uh, that's, that just like increased like my suicidal ideation and anxiety and stuff. Cause it felt like I was getting bullied at school online and at home. And when I found Christ after all of that, like I tried everything, like I've tried social media, I've tried, you know, boys, I've tried smoking, I've tried drinking, I've tried partying, I've tried, I tried everything And when I found Jesus after I graduated and after I moved out of my hometown, there was nothing, like, there was nothing that could convince me to go back to my old ways because I knew immediately that Jesus was the answer. And that one decision that I made four years ago is the one decision that absolutely changed my life and why I'm here and why I do the things that I do. Um, and, and honestly, like God just moves so visibly throughout my life and I'm just so stinking blessed and, um, it's been amazing. But why I bring this up is because when my pastor reached out to me and he said, Emmy, we're going to do a sermon series on truth. And when we want you to talk about on whether if Christianity is true or not, when I thought about proving if Christianity is true or not, I didn't think of like studies or commentaries or what any college or professor or scientist has to say. I thought of the exact moment when I was in my godmom's bedroom and her and my best friend were hugging me after prophesying and seeing and hearing me and God using them to communicate to me. I was thinking of that very moment when I said to myself, or to God that he's real. Like I I remember the moment when I knew God was real and that he saw me, heard me and loved me. So when we bring up the topic on whether Christianity is true or not, I think a lot of you guys may have clicked this episode thinking I'm going to bring up commentaries, textbooks, scientific evidence, or whatever the heck. All those expectations need to be squashed. Because although science does back up Christianity and historical events, like the Bible is basically a big old historical book, even though all of those things, you know, have the ability to prove the existence of God, the Bible alone gives enough evidence. And I want to talk about 
how the belief system we have, which is honestly just truth, in Jesus, we believe because the Bible says that God is real and God is real because the Bible says so. It's like, that's the, is that how I wrote it? Let me see. Is that how I wrote it? I feel like I said that wrong. God is real because the Bible says so, and the Bible is true because God is real. There we go. God is real because the Bible says so, and the Bible is true because God is real. What does that mean? That means I don't have to pull out any textbook, scientific evidence, historical annotation, whatever it may be, to prove the existence of God because the Bible is enough evidence. Why do I say this? Because as soon as we bring another external source to prove the existence of God, we're basically saying that that same very thing has more authority over than God's word. Does that make sense? We are basically saying that that thing that we're using to prove God's existence has more authority than the Bible. So I could bring historical evidence and scientific analytical data, all this stuff, which I think is important. Like for an example, like at the bottom of the Red Sea, they found like chariot wheels from when they wiped out the Egyptians, like dozens of them. And it's like, it, even just like other stuff they dug up and found and all this stuff. It's like, I could come on my podcast and talk about all that junk, which is quite fascinating, but none of that will, will have more authority than what the Bible says. And what the Bible says is that God is very, very real. And we believe because of what faith, like this is a whole episode on just faith and what that looks like. Cause I think as a generation, we just see so many options, so many different religions and practices that we could be overwhelmed by options and not knowing which one is true and which one is not. And when you have a lot of options, it's easy to doubt. We talked about this in The Fear of Missing Out, right? But the truth, the rock, the light, which Jesus is, we act on faith, on faith, not by sight, but by faith. And if you look at every single Bible character in the Bible, none of them had historical evidence or textbooks or a pastor tell them that God is real. They had faith. They didn't have all these tools and resources that we have now. They have faith alone. And we believe because we have faith. And I kind of want to talk about what that looks like and um, just how God operates. Um just kind of want to take y'all to the beginning of, of the Bible, Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Go down to Genesis uh, 1, 26 through 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeliness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and all over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We are made in his image and in his likeliness. So what's so beautiful about God is that if you want the full existence, if you want to know what God looks like, and if you want to, if you want to see walking proof and evidence of God, literally look around you. People, us, all of us are representatives of Christ. Every single person that you see walking this planet represents Christ. They are an advocate for Christ. They are made in his image, whether if they're his children or not. Like God has made us mankind in his image. So already the Bible is telling us that proof is within just creation alone. The existence of God is within creation. Uh, I love what it says in Romans uh, 1, 18 through 20. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and the wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wicked, wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God had made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have clearly been seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. So it's like we want to question God all day when we're literally walking in evidence every single day. And this makes people very uncomfortable because they're like, oh, that's not really proof because that requires me to believe. That's the whole point 
is to have faith. You think like, I think I said this in one episode. If God made his existence like, like you got to understand. So freedom and love place together, right? And if I really do believe that if God, which he kind of already did, he already did walk this earth. But I think if everybody were to see God and know he was real and all this stuff, like they would feel forced to, to follow, you know, this is just kind of like raw thinking, but in my head, I'm like, dude, like faith is so beautiful because even though I don't see it, I just know because of what you've done in my life. I think faith is so beautiful. And I think God is such a genius for creating faith instead of just like being here and having us see him all the time. I think, I mean, it would be great, but I think faith is so much more beautiful because we get to experience true love through faith. I really do believe that. Um, What was I going to say? I wrote the fact that we live and breathe uh, is evidence within God's existence. You don't need textbooks or commentators to prove the true existence of God when we are walking in true evidence every single day. Which is like, literally, we walk in evidence of God every single day. Um, Like I was saying earlier, like these Bible characters, every single Bible character operated by faith. Every Bible character that believed in Jesus and did the works of God moved by faith and not by sight or textbooks, or what other people said, all by faith. And uh, Proverbs 3, 5 says, lean on the, or trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That's what faith is, is I can't even lean on my own understanding because my understanding doesn't even have the comprehension to understand who and what God is, what's next for me, what my plan, what my purpose is. Like my understanding only is so little and it's like people want to rely on their own understanding like oh yeah i got it like you know my truth my like my this my that my truth my life my choice all these things right when it's like you rely on your own mind but yet you change it every day Yesterday, you want McDonald's, and all of a sudden, today, you want Chipotle? Like, we change. (laughs) Like, we are a species that changes all the time. We have minds that don't really comprehend much, and our minds change like this constantly. So we have to lean on God who understands and knows and does not change. He stays the same, and he is the truth. So as soon as I lean on him and put my faith and trust in him, dude, you're golden. Um, I want to talk about two Bible characters uh, that really came up while I was like putting together just like these notes and like this sermon or this podcast or whatever. And um, two Bible characters that really stood out to me when they exemplify faith was Noah and Abraham. And with Noah, so I just want to set the scene real quick. Noah's story is taken in Genesis, which is like beginning of time, right? Noah was instructed by God to build an ark. And I don't know if you guys seen what how big this ark is. Uh, they have like a like a version of it, like a real life version of it, or you know what I mean, like a replica. There we go. Um, in Kentucky, I think it is, um, of the ark. And this thing is absolutely massive. Like, this thing is huge. I think it's like a football field and a half long. I think it's like three school bu- buses tall. Like, it's it's like absurd. It's absolutely wild. So imagine it's like the beginning of time. And, like, they don't got a whole lot. And Noah's building this big old ark for a flood. These people probably don't even know what a flood is, let alone, have they even seen rain? Have they seen rain yet? <laughs> and so I could just see Noah building this ark and people looking at my boy crazy like, Noah, why are you building this ark? Like, you saying there's a flood? Like, man, you crazy. But but God instructed Noah to build the ark and Noah built the ark not out of knowledge, but out of obedience. 
and out of faith and out of wisdom. Because if Noah built the ark out of his own comprehension and own knowledge, it wouldn't have looked like God gave him very specific instruction on how to build this ark. And people were probably calling him crazy until the flood came. Now everybody trying to hop into the boat. (laughs) This is what faith looks like, is doing things that God says, even though you don't even see the end of it. Even though God says, hey, I need you to do this because this is going to happen. And even if you don't know what 90% of that looks like, faith is doing it anyways because God told you to do so. You're abiding by what he says because you trust in him, because you believe him. I think it's so beautiful because everybody probably thought Noah was crazy. Then the flood came. I can only imagine how Noah felt. He was like, oh my gosh, the flood came. God, you showed up. Thank you. Like, that's so reassuring to our faith that God will call us into seasons and into things to build things, to do things, to put our hands on stuff, to make a move, whatever it may be. God will tell us to do things and we respond in faith to that, to the calling of God. And God will then respond to us with his end of the promise by fulfilling, by fulfilling it. Like, that's so beautiful. And another person um, I think of is Abraham. Uh, I feel like I talk about Abraham on here a lot. But with, with him and Sarai having Isaac, I could only imagine how long it felt for Isaac to come. And God comes to Abraham with this booming big old promise. See all the stars in the sky? Your lineage is going to be more than this. Like, that's what your offspring is going to look like. And I'm going to give you a son through your wife. Even though you guys are at old age, I'm still going to bless you. And God comes to Abraham booming this big old promise. And what happens right after? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing happens right after God gives Abraham the promise. Not because God wasn't going to do it, but because God wanted Abraham to exercise his faith. And God came to Abraham with this big old promise. Abraham responded in faith to wait on the Lord, even though, you know, he had that little mishap with Hagar. But he waited on the Lord and the Lord was faithful to him and did exactly what he said. Abraham had to stay faithful, and then God did what he did. Like, this is faith. Uh, it says in Hebrews eleven seven through 9, uh, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. You want to know what I love about this verse? It says he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. This is literally us day to day in our lives with Christ, is that God will tell us something and our job is to respond And our job is to respond out of obedience and endurance to go, okay, let's go. Even though I don't know where I'm going, God, I have trust in you and I believe in you because of your word, because of my testimony, the things that you've already delivered me from. And I have full confidence that I can step into the things that you have called me into because I've seen you work before. So yes, I will obey and go even though I don't know where I'm going because you are so good and so faithful. This is faith. This is faith. Another thing I wanted to talk about, um, we're talking about faith and how faith is such a beautiful principle and how, you know, the Bible, uh, the Bible says God is real and God is real because, or God is real because the Bible says so. And the Bible is real because God is real. And I think when we step into faith, and we start doing more things out of obedience and we are we are acting more bold on the call that God has put on our life like we are acting out in boldness i think it's easier to encounter doubt 
And I feel like just from personal experience, I faced the most opposition and doubt when I was actually stepping to, into the things that God wanted me to do. Because if I was my adversary, if I was stepping, if I saw, if I saw my adversary walking into the call of God, I'd be like, nah, how can I hit her with something or what can I hit her with to cause her to, to stumble back? And that's doubt. The enemy does that. When we start stepping into the goodness of God and the things that he has planned for us, the enemy will just start throwing doubt at us like no other and we see this in the garden it's literally one of the first things that happened and every episode i know we talk about the dang garden but we have to because it's so important and everybody say it with me genesis 3 1 now the serpent was more crafty than any of any of the other wild animals the lord god had made he said to the woman did god really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden the woman said to the serpent we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden but god did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's from the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die you will not certainly die the serpent said to the woman for god knows that when you eat from it your eyes will be opened and you will be like god knowing good and evil when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom she took some and ate it and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it all Adam and Eve knew was God. And as soon as they were presented with an option and with doubt, they forgot who God was. Because in my head, I'm like, what did you think? <laughs> if, if all you knew was God and you saw something in opposition of it or outside of it, that you're going to want to take that thing back to God and be like, hey, God, what's this thing over here? What's going on? But Instead of remembering God, they forgot about him because they were so focused on the doubt that was being presented to them by Satan. Adam and Eve forgot about the goodness of God they were living in and they allowed an outside source to cause them to doubt. They allowed Satan, an outside source from God, to determine their next steps. And obviously we see we saw where that went. <laughs> Because now we're we're in living proof of or we're we're basically like stepping day in day out of what Adam and Eve did. And I said this in my podcast episode last week. As soon as you understand that you cannot trust yourself, it's so much easier to trust God. Why is that? Because we cannot lean on our own understanding. And. Adam and Eve literally witnessed God, like walking in the cool of day with God, and they slipped up. You don't think we're going to slip up every day? (laughs) You don't think our minds are going to lead us to deceit? It's like we need to lean on God because we cannot rely on our own thinking. And it's easier to doubt God when you've forgotten about the things that he's done for you. I also talked about this last week, but I'm going to talk about it again. Or did I talk about it last week or the week before that? We're going to talk about it again because it's so important. Because my evidence, my evidence of the true living God isn't based off of science or historical evidence, commentators, pastors, my parents, grandparents, godparents, whoever it may be. My evidence is of who God is, doesn't come from any of that. My evidence of knowing if God is real and just the factual, like my evidence that God is real is from what he has saved me from and what God took me out of. Because I was ashamed, I was depressed, I was anxious, I was on the brink of taking my own life and God delivered me. God pulled me out. God was the one who got me out of all of that. It wasn't my parents. It wasn't my pastor. It wasn't even my friends. It wasn't another practice, religion, belief system. It was all God. All of it was God. And as a believer four years later from making that decision I did, you know, four years ago, I'm able to continuously step out in faith because I'm always reminded of my testimony and the place that Jesus took me out of. 
and you have to remember your testimony and the things that God has done for you, or you will forget about the things that he will continue to do for you. So what are my applications? Three things. Get into God's word. We talk about this all the time. Um, If you want to hear what God's saying, but you don't know what he's saying and you haven't cracked open that Bible, it's literally a whole book of God having a conversation with you. Please open up your Bible. If you want to know what God says, there's a whole book on it. Baby, read it. Second thing, seek mentorship and community. I think when a lot of people first come to Christ, it can feel very like a lot. (laughs) I feel like when people come to Christ, it feels like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on. (laughs) Um, And there's a lot of information. How do I read my Bible and all these things? Seeking mentorship, someone who can mentor you through this walk and through your faith is so important. And also surrounding yourself with people who are going to edify you and, and encourage you with words and with scripture. That is so important. I highly encourage you, if you are a new believer, or even if you're just a believer in general, please seek mentorship and community because it will increase your faith, by all means, I promise. And then my last application, pray and ask God for wisdom and instruction. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Wisdom is something we can receive for free. We can ask for it, and God will grant it onto us for free. So generously. (laughs) So if you want to know what God's telling you and how to step in faith and what that looks like, and God, I'm confused and I don't know what this looks like, all this stuff, ask for wisdom, ask for clarity, ask for understanding. If you don't know what's going on, ask God to help you understand because he will grant it upon you freely. And I think a lot of people don't understand God, but they won't ask God to help them understand and that's what James 1 5 says. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Literally, ask God. If you don't know who God is, if you don't know what He's calling on your life, if you don't know the characteristics of God or how He's wanting you to obey, all these things, ask for wisdom. And I really do believe a lot of people are missing out on basic fundamental truth of who God is. Because they're not even humbly asking for wisdom. So maybe some of us this week just need to ask for wisdom and see how God is going to provide. Because it literally says, he gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. Your job is to just ask out of humility. And um, I gave... um, the students that I preached to questions to answer. And I want you guys to answer these questions too, just rhetorically in your prayer closet. I'm going to give them to you. Last thing, then we're going to go. First one being, do you believe in Christianity? Why or why not? It's a very simple question, but we don't ask ourselves that. Do you believe in Christianity? Why or why not? Second question, how did you become Christian? Did you grow up in the church? How did you discover Jesus on your own? What's the point of this question? For you to remember where God delivered you from. Where are your roots with Jesus? Remember that. Three, have you struggled before with doubt and not trusting God? I feel like a lot of people could be like, uh, yes, definitely. And then last one, how can you be more faithful and continue to grow more trust in God? Because all of us have been faced with doubt. But how can we combat that with God's word and with his faithfulness and with him being the truth? And I don't mean to uh, disappoint y'all that, uh, you know, I didn't give scientific evidence and all this stuff. Which there really, there is evidence uh, that's like historical, scientific, sure, all these things. But nothing will ever outdo God's word alone. And I just encourage you guys to read the word this week and to dive into what God says through scripture, through the word. If you don't know how to read the Bible, there's YouTube, there's people who can help you, community, people at your church, friends, whoever, whoever it may be. Even if you don't got friends, like there's YouTube, there's the internet. We have no excuse 
Absolutely none. And um, I'm just praying that there's an increase of faith. And I'm really believing in it. Uh, What was I going to say? Definitely done with time. Uh, If you have any prayer requests, there's a link in my bio on my Instagram or below this YouTube video to my people watching on YouTube. Um, If you click the link and you need prayer requests, please fill it out. I'd love to pray for you. Uh, if you've been saved through, through through any of my episodes, there's also this tab that says, I just gave my life to Jesus. Tell me your story. I would love to pray for you and uplift you during that. And then also, if you feel led to tithe, there's a cash app link uh, where you guys are more than welcome to tithe in my Instagram bio and also in the description of this YouTube video. Um, and if you don't feel led to tithe, that's okay. Prayers are always welcome. I need lots of prayer for this ministry. As of recently, uh, prayers to honestly, like that I get a team and that I can, like, there's so many things that God's wanting to do in this ministry, and I need more people and resources to do it. It's like, we're we're good, like, finance-wise and stuff. It's just kind of more so of, like, I don't have anyone helping me. And um, I'm really praying for a team and just for elevation in this ministry. So I hope... I hope that's what God wants, but I'm pretty sure that's what God is wanting for me. So just please pray uh, for that over this podcast and whatnot. And yeah, I think I see that, y'all. I'm about to fly out right now to go film um, a show with TBN, so I'm so excited. But um, I love you guys so much, and I hope you guys feel encouraged, and I hope you just step out in faith this week. I love you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. And um, I'll see you guys two weeks from now. Love you guys. Bye.